On the news at 7, Governor Akere Dulu writes on Do Assembly seeking extension of medical leave. Proposed government's flyover at Irese Junction to address traffic congestion along Akure Owo Highway. Nigerian Army rescues 300 people abducted by bandits in Kebi. And from the foreign scene, six people die after knife attack in Chinese kindergarten. Good evening and welcome to the news at 7. I am Akimumi Abodunde. Ondo State Governor Oluwaru Timi Akeredolu has forwarded a letter extending his medical leave to the State House of Assembly. This follows doctor's advice on the need to take adequate rest after medical attention. Receiving the letter on behalf of other lawmakers, Speaker of the Ondo State House of Assembly, Olami De Oladiji, said the governor's action is in line with Section 190 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. According to the letter, his deputy, Lucky Ayedatewa, will continue to act as governor until there is a written declaration to the contrary. The governor had in his letter of 5th June 2023 informed that he was proceeding on medical leave and was expected to resume on the 6th of July 2023. The speaker, who expressed appreciation to God for the speedy recovery of the governor, expressed optimism that he will soon resume his duties. The multi-billion Naira flyover project situated at Akura Owo Expressway, when completed, will address traffic congestion constantly experienced on the busy and narrow route. Residents of Akure, the Ondo state capital, while hailing the initiative of Governor Luaru Timakere Delu to make life more bearable to the citizens, said the incessant accidents in the area will soon be a thing of the past. Omonio Lahumbeji has details. A few months ago, the Ondo state government announced the construction of a flyover at Oyerobulem Shagari Irese on Akurewa Expressway to allow free flow of vehicular movement. The contractor handling the project immediately swung into action with demolition of existing structure. OSRC's visit to the site revealed preliminary work ongoing with ground balancing and stabilization to allow for smooth and good service delivery of the site equipment. An existing curvet in less than 500 meters from the major road is currently being expanded to enable the river and the area to accommodate more pressure. According to the project engineer, Tosin Adibayo, reinforcement has been fixed to the deck level while fixing of the firm work is ongoing. The wind water, we are going to connect it for the downstream of the river. So this is actually a 50% portion of the entire length of the covet. By the time we are through with this and it cures, we back free, we create our alternate route here, then we can demolish the existing that is not adequate and free and construct the other part. To complete the entire width of the road project that we are on. The engineer gave the estimated length of the whole project to be 650 meters and overall width of 28 meters comprising of the bridge and the side roads alongside other accessories. We are at the foundation stage now while we're doing the piling. So after the piling work we'll be able to do the pie cap and start doing the superstructures of the bridge. And also we are doing the precast element, the longitudinal beams, where we have the reinforcement already being uh, fixed over there. And the casting will commence soon. And we have some other uh, fundamental works that we are working on to ensure that the work runs simultaneously so as to catch up and uh, complete the project in the due time. Residents of the state and road users hailed the development. Uh, Ati gomi na wa arakonre akire dolu. Aripe ni doshan do wa e. O je ibi kan to le wu pupo. To se pe accident ma sele. Ati ari ni igba kan. To se pe accident kan sele to je pe gbogbo side bayi ina jo lo nbe. 
to se pe o pa won eniyan lara so inu wa dun si mo se fe ba wa sese ni bi bayi ni to je pe a safe emi awon eniyan a da safe emi irin se ta nlo gan to pa won eniyan lara amo ko si nkan ta fe se si kilo si da na ni nkan o ba ba je nkan na le da tori o do ku to te ma wa nbi bayi o ba je ba se bridge bayi o do pun ya a tu din ku The project is scheduled to be completed in 18 months. Omoni Olahunbeji, OSRC News. The All Progressives Congress has postponed its caucus and National Executive Committee meetings to the 18th and 19th of this month. The meetings were earlier scheduled for today and tomorrow. According to APC National Secretary Iyola Omishore, the postponement was necessitated by the regional schedules and engagements of President Bola Tinubu, who is the new chairman of the Economic Community of West African States. In a related development, the Senator Abdullahi Adamu led National Working Committee today met with all chairmen of the APC state chapters at the National Secretariat in Abuja. The meeting was for the former Nasarawa state governor to update state leaders on the nominees of the party's statutory and ad hoc committees before they are tabled before NEC for approval. The federal government, through the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, TET Fund, will release 174 million naira to 28 tertiary institutions for the purchase of furniture, books and ICT equipment. In a document by the Education Support Services of Tet Fund, the agency said it had earlier disbursed 1.6 billion naira to 44 institutions for the purchase of the same resources. The 174 million naira to be released is for the second half of 2023. The final tranche of disbursement, as indicated by the Tet Fund, shows that 46.5 million naira will be disbursed to five universities, 34.5 million naira to seven polytechnics, while 93 million naira will be disbursed to 16 colleges of education. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission says it will delist any loan application harassing customers and ask Google to permanently delete such apps from its app store. This was in response to the continued harassment and defamation being meted on Nigerians by the digital lenders. Earlier in the year, FCCPC mandated loan apps to register appropriately and 180 of them got full or conditional approval from the Commission to operate in the country. Chief Executive Officer of FCCPC, Babatunde Irukera, said the Commission is ready to permanently shut down the activities of unregistered loan apps. Irukera advised consumers to only take loans from approved loan apps since they are easier to find and sanction. Ekiti State Governor Biodun Oyebanji has directed the police, the DSS and Amoteko Corps to secure the release of the abducted state chairman of the APC in Ekiti, Paul Omotosho, and two others from captivity. Oyebanji, who was represented by his deputy, Munisha De Afuye, gave the directive when he visited members of Omotosho's family at Imesiekiti to sympathize with them on the devastating incident. He said that Omotosho should not only be rescued unscathed, but the perpetrators of the dastardly act nabbed and made to face the full weight of the law. The former commissioner, Omotosho, and two others were abducted by gunmen along Agbado in Mercy Road on Saturday and whisked to an unknown destination. Police operatives attached to Lagos Rapid Response Squad have arrested a suspected cultist in Ikoyi. The suspect, identified as Idris Ayila, was, re was reportedly intercepted by police detectives on routine check along Oniru area of Ikoyi while he was in a car with his colleagues on their way to Oniru Beach. Police Public Relations Officer Benjamin Hundain said the 33-year-old suspect fired at the police operatives after offering them bribe, which they turned down. According to Hundain, his colleagues reportedly jumped down from the car 
and took to their heels, following which he was, he was promptly arrested and taken into custody. Meanwhile, Lagos State Police Commissioner Idowu Owohunwa has assured that efforts are underway to arrest the fleeing suspects. Governor of Anambra State, Chukuma Soludo, has directed that Mesoma Ijikeme be handed over to the State Guidance Counseling Unit following her admission of faking her unified tertiary matriculation examination result. Soludo further directed the immediate commencement of psychological counseling and therapy sessions for Mesoma and that she should be handed over to a professor of clinical psychology. The directive is in line with, with one of the recommendations of the committee set up by Anambra State Government to investigate the matter following the parade of the fake results which elicited interest and generated controversy and misgivings by the, among the general public. The committee of inquiry set up by the Anambra State Government to look into the examination fraud issue involving Mesoma confirmed that she manipulated her UTME result giving herself a score of 362 as against the actual score of 249. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons has commended the Nigerian judiciary over what it described as recent landmark convictions on sexual and gender-based violence and related offenses under the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. NAPTIP Director General Professor Fatima Waziriazi gave the commendation in Abuja at a retreat with judges and prosecutors on strengthening government approach in prosecuting sexual and gender-based violence, calling for robust partnership between NAPTIP judges and prosecutors across every state of the Federation. She said four convictions were secured recently in the FCT and one landmark rape conviction in Sakoto. She noted that the scourge of SGBV and other related crimes must be caught on all must be fought on all fronts, with all relevant parties playing their respective roles with utmost sense of justice and integrity. Thirty-five states have their different versions of the VAP Act, and the only state left is Kano. No fewer than thirty people abducted by terrorists in the Danko. Wasagu, local government area of KB State, have been rescued by the Nigerian army. Chairman of the Council, Husseini Bena, explained in burning KB, the state capital, that while 24 of those abducted were released on Friday, the remaining six regained their freedom early this week. Bena noted that the release of the outstanding allowances to the security agencies by Governor Nasser Idris had boosted the morale of the personnel which led to the remarkable success. He commended the state government for what he described as the continued and monumental support to security agencies towards restoring peace in the state. Some of the released abductees are from Kotangora in Niger State, Demari, Kaba and Kijiji in Sakoto, while the rest were from Bena in Kebi State. You're watching the news at 7 on OSRC television. We take a break at this point. The news continues shortly. Please stay with us. Win an all express bay trip to Disneyland in the Indomie Golden Magnet promo. To participate, just buy the Indomie 70 gram pack and look for the magnet inside. Log into www.indomie.ng forward slash golden magnet promo to fill in your details and enter your unique magnet code. All the golden magnet winners will get to experience the wonders of Disneyland. Silver magnet winners stand a chance to win amazing prizes. Every pack of Indomie you buy comes with your favorite indomitable magnet. Terms and conditions apply. Indomie, tasty nutrition, good for you. Thank you for staying with us. You can also watch us live on our website, www.osrc.ng, or follow us on Facebook at OSRC TV. And on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel, OSRC TV. Undo. The Association of Community Pharmacists in Nigeria has expressed concern over the state of drug distribution in the country, saying infiltrators and quacks have taken over its distribution channels. The association also advocated ethical drug distribution, lamenting that the current system of distributing medicines poses security threats to the health of the citizens. 
its chairman, Wali Oladigbolu, said the challenges of medicine security had always been tied to the non-production of active pharmaceutical ingredients in Nigeria. ACPN urged government at all levels, including requisite stakeholders, to catalyze universal health coverage by formalizing better rules of engagement with community pharmacists in alignment with global best practices. The body added that the future of community pharmacy is undergoing significant global transformation driven by technological advancements, changing consumer expectations, and evolving healthcare systems. Hoodlums have invaded the state campaign office of the Social Democratic Party, vandalizing the complex, pulling down the billboard, and setting it on fire in Kogi State. Speaking on the incident in Lokoja, the running mate to the SDP governorship candidate, Sam Abenemi, expressed shock that the hoodlums, whom he claimed were political thugs, could invade the campaign office and destroy its property, even without any form of of provocation. The Director General, Strategic Planning Directorate of the Governorship Campaign Council, Gawan Enenche, urged the police and Kogi State Government to urgently fish out the perpetrators and bring them to justice. In a swift reaction, Kogi State Government has condemned in strong terms the alleged vandalization of the campaign office, describing it as barbaric, undemocratic and unacceptable to the people and government of the state. Commissioner for Information, King Tsi Fanwo, said the state government will continue to support the freedom of anyone and everyone to aspire to positions in line with democratic values and ethos and called on security agencies to urgently investigate and apprehend the perpetrators of the act. Property and goods worth several millions of naira have been destroyed following a downpour that lasted several hours in Makurdi, Benue State. The worst hit areas are Wurkum, the part of Makurdi where the bridge across the river Benue is sited. The entire Wurkum market was submerged in water, while the water level in most places was still ankle deep. Many makeshift stores also collapsed on themselves, destroying goods in the process. Benue State government officials who visited the market alleged that most of the drains around the area were blocked by refuse, thus allowing flood, flooding of the market space. Moving to the foreign scene, U.S. President Joe Biden has expressed a desire to see Sweden join NATO in an interface with Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan, in which they discussed Sweden's bid to become a member of the Western Alliance. Turkey and Hungary have been a stumbling block to Sweden's bid, which requires unanimous approval by all NATO members. Erdogan told Biden that Stockholm has taken steps in the right direction for Ankara to ratify its bid, referring to an anti-terrorism law, but said the steps were not useful as Kurdistan Workers' Party supporters continued to hold demonstrations in Sweden. Akin today, Akin Shimola has more. U.S. President Joe Biden told Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan that he'd like to welcome Sweden into NATO as soon as possible. That's according to the White House, which said the two leaders discussed a range of issues over the phone ahead of an upcoming NATO summit in Vilnius, Lithuania. Membership to the alliance requires unanimous approval by all NATO members, and Hungary and Turkey have yet to clear the way for Sweden. Turkey accuses Sweden of harboring members of militant groups, mainly supporters of Kurdistan Workers' Party or PKK, who Erdogan says organize demonstrations and finance terrorist groups. Swedish officials say their nation is no safe haven for terrorism. Swedish officials say their nation is no safe haven for terrorism. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg signaled he would convene a meeting between Erdogan and the Swedish Prime Minister in Vilnius. Biden will hold talks with NATO leaders on Tuesday and Wednesday. During the summit, allies aim to show support for Ukraine and give Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky a sense of what will have to be done to gain NATO membership sometimes in the future. In an interview with Revealing History, Biden urged caution for now on Ukraine's drive to join NATO, saying the alliance could get drawn into the war with Russia due to NATO's mutual defense pact. According to Zelensky, 
an invitation will send a message that the Western Defense Alliance is not afraid of Moscow. Akin Tunde, Akin Shimola, for SRC News. Six people, including children, have been killed in a kindergarten stabbing in China's southeastern Guangdong province. Police said they have arrested a 25-year-old man with the surname Wu In Lianjiang. The other victims are a teacher and two parents. Police have called this case on this a case of intentional assault, but did not elaborate on a possible motive. The attack happened just as parents were dropping their children off for summer classes. Lagos State player Enoch Wali has emerged the champion of the Masters category of the third edition of Governor Doe Diri National Scrabble Championship in Yenegua, the Bayelsa State capital. The player recorded 12 wins at the DSP Alamiesega Banquet Hall with a plus 705 cumulative spread to win the trophy and 500,000 Naira star prize. Last year's champion, Nsikak Etim, came second with 11 wins and, and, and Emmanuel finished third. President of the Niger Scrabble Federation, Olubakiaka, in a remark commended the Bayelsa State Government for continuously hosting the spectacle in the state, describing Bayelsa as one of the leading states in sports in Nigeria. He urged all Scrabble stars in Nigeria that would be representing the nation at the World Championship to be focused and do the nation proud. And now to end the news at 7, another look at the major stories. Ondo State Governor Oluwaru Timiakere Dolu has written the State House of Assembly seeking an extension of his medical leave. Ondo State Government says the proposed flyover at Iresa Junction is to address traffic congestion along the Akure Owo Highway. The Nigerian Army has rescued 300 people abducted by bandits in KB State. And from the foreign scene, six people have died after a knife attack in a Chinese kindergarten. That's it on the News at 7. Thank you for being a part of it. Good evening.